Coming to you live from the palatial studios of PBJ Productions. Welcome to Patrick and BJ Talk Real Estate, where we talk about life, the universe, and everything as it relates to real estate. Hey everybody, it's BJ. And Patrick. And we're back talking all things real estate. Uh, just want to take a minute before we get going in today's episode and thank all of our subscribers. We are growing as a channel and so if you haven't, please take a minute and subscribe. We are putting out a minimum of three episodes every week so you want to make sure that you don't miss anything so subscribe and like and that way you'll get all the notifications and won't miss anything and if you have any questions about the Victoria market specifically or you want to know about maybe you want to buy a home sell a home buy a business sell a business in the area uh, feel free to reach out to us for that because we're happy to help with that as well so without further ado <laughs> Bling -ling -ling. okay hello it's Commissioner Gordon. I need Batman. It's Batman. Oh, I see. Okay. No, no. You don't call. You put up the... Whatever. What is it? The light? No, no. The bat light? The In bat? the 60s one, they didn't put up the bat light. They would call. There's the red phone, right? They there would call the red phone. phone? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. This is what Commissioner Gordon's worried about. Canadians are leaving Canada in record numbers. You know, and in 2024, we're going to have a banger of a year. We've just come out of the third quarter. We haven't. We don't have numbers on the fourth quarter. Yeah. But it is the fourth largest exodus of Canadians in seventy-three years. Okay. Now be careful what I said, right? It's the fourth largest. It's not the most largest. Yeah, yeah. But there is an increase. Okay. In people leaving, um, we did a video on new Canadians leaving. Why are they? You know, why are they leaving? So there's, you know, there's some obvious reasons: taxation, uh, job opportunities. Uh, it's expensive to live here. Family, Ma family returning, uh, healthcare, weather, all, weather. Maybe yeah, a lot of people didn't like the weather. You know, sorry, it's Canada, it's cold, things like that, right? Not always cold. So we covered all the reasons why people were <coughs> leaving, but um, in that why new Canadians uh, are leaving Canada, we also talked about it's a record number of immigrants coming to Canada. Right. So those, those ones that are leaving have uh, on average been in Canada between one to seven years. Okay. So now, now with uh, our federal government, uh, immigration policy is to get over a half a million new immigrants, new Canadians, <clears throat> well, I guess they're not Canadians yet, uh, new immigrants to Canada in 2024. Okay. So as they've been steadily increasing, we've had a steady increase of new immigrants leaving. It went from like 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 last year. Okay. It was like 40,000 okay. people. So maybe, you know, we're probably going to see a number between 40 and 50,000. But this is about Canadians leaving. So that okay. third quarter. So how do you, hang oh, on, hang yeah, on. Yeah. So tell That's me first of all, fast, how, how right? are we? Because so how are we defining Canadians leaving? They have a citizenship. Permanent, uh, permanent residence. Okay. Yeah. Or 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 citizenship. Or citizenship. Or okay. Yeah, I'm not gonna pick on that too much, right? Yeah. Because when I'm when I do end up talking about people who are a non-permanent residence, I'll get into that. Yeah. After, a little bit later okay. from now, yeah. right? Yeah. So where did I leave off? I go. Uh, so third quarter. Third quarter, we had seventy-three thousand. What? It's not immigrate, it's emigrate, leave Canada. Okay, yeah. So that's the fourth largest, <clears throat> whatever, exodus in the last 73 years. Okay. So that's kind of interesting. So sure. you would think, like, from all of those reasons that we so quickly mentioned ab above, um, the, I want to let you know more about non permanent residents that have come to Canada in 2023 because the numbers are out. Okay. So, uh, new immigrants were around 463, 465,000, which is a, a really high amount. We're not used to this many uh, new immigrants okay. coming to Canada. Right. We had some refugees, not a significant number. Um, a post second, uh, here on a, on, on a learning visa, mm -hmm. student visa, but this is where, um, this is where it, the numbers really come in. The student visa might actually come down because it's getting harder to get them here. Uh, 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 um, temporary workers. Okay, yeah. So uh, if you look back in videos, we talked about this between refugees, uh, students, uh, uh, part-time work, part-time, uh, non-permanent, uh, they're here on a work permit, that's work what visa. I'm trying to say. Yeah. Work visa and immigrants and even 2023 or 2022 would have been like a record number of like a million new people came to Canada. The numbers came out, it's 2 million. 
Wow. Okay. So here might be some of the re like one of the one of the reasons where with COVID I'm thinking about um, where um, there's many digital nomads out there that mm -hmm. might just decide they're they're Canadian but they have some skills and they can make the money somewhere else and yep. live you know some kind of a idea what, yep. what their dream life maybe sure um, but people would be thinking. I'm thinking about like maybe it's a South Park episode or a Simpsons episode. You know, all the immigrants are taking our jobs. You know, that's not necessarily true. Yeah, for sure. So I want to talk about the non permanent residents, uh, uh, as in uh, people here on work visas. Okay. So the the other remaining probably a million or a little bit more than a million here are on work visas. What kind of jobs do they take? Now we talked about people coming to Canada and challenges. Um, the challenge is coming here. Yeah. If they're a nurse, a doctor, an engineer, or, yep. you know, th those licenses might not transfer over sure. as easily. Yes. So I want to just quickly highlight where are they, where are they working and how much are they working? So off the top, they work less hours typically than Canadians, than permanent residences, okay. like 80%. Okay. of the hours okay so it's considerably lower yeah and i'm just thinking like you know keeping track of the market and what is the <coughs> unemployment rate so where does that fit in right because i can't remember everything uh <coughs> i've got the top 10 <coughs> jobs that uh non-permanent residents go to okay the number one and i'll be quick nurses aides orderlies and patient service associates okay those are probably licensed nurses mm -hmm. in other countries, different languages, things sure. like that, right? Mm -hmm. Number two, light duty cleaners. Okay. Material handlers, laborers in food, mark, food and beverage processing, transport truck drivers, food counter attendants, kitchen helpers, related support occupations, delivery service drivers, and door to door distributors. Okay. You know. Uh, retail salespersons and visual merchandisers, don't know what that is, but I know what a retail person is. Uh, security guards and security service related op occupations and other customer and information service representatives. Okay. So these are not, um, even those, ah, I'll put it this way. Many people come here that are overqualified for the positions that they work in. Yes. What does this also do? This also, this is the... There's a really long article that I read about uh, Canada's GDP. So, um, because these are typically lower paid work mm -hmm. than what they might be qualified for back in their home countries, um, it reflects on a lower GDP per capita in Canada. Okay. I'm not sure exactly how that's counted in unemployment numbers. Sure. But that could also be um, uh, misrepresenting our unemployment numbers. Yeah. I'll put it this way. So all of these categories that are the top 10 categories, you know, you need certain qualifications and now we're short skilled work, licensed, licensed work mm -hmm. that uh, we still see an unemployment rate of like, you know, somewhere <coughs> between five and 7%, yeah. de depending what area we might be talking about. Yeah. So it's a little skewed. It's like, wait a minute, we have all these people come in, we have all these temporary workers come in, um, but our unemployment rate still seems to, it's not, it's, not, um, it's not higher than, let's say 2018, 2019. Obviously 2020 took a huge dip. Right. And then uh, during COVID it kind of like went up a little bit and then it's kind of subsided. And now it's starting to increase a little bit, but we have two things happening at the same time. We have highest immigration levels temporary workers and then we have our unemployment rate slightly going up like i know all the baby boomers haven't retired yet right but there is an exodus of skilled work yeah it's happening upper level management yeah. it's happening now or in the process of happening i just had this conversation with somebody in a senior management management position yeah and uh you know he said i'm i'm younger but um, he said the other kind of comparables of my position in the industry mm -hmm. uh, in top management he said they're some of them are pushing 80. oh wow right yeah yeah late late like late late 60s mid 70s he said they're you know they're basically ready to ride off into the sunset 
and you know they're doing it because they love to do it or whatever the reason is but they're holding they're, on a little bit yeah. yeah that's fine yeah so i just wanted to make sure like um you know you'll you'll see the headlines all these people leaving canada canada is not a horrible place to live is yeah. it perfect do we have problems yes we do um but it's like globally, it's very yeah. politically stable. Yeah. The crime is still very like even compared to the United yeah, States. And the United speaking, States yeah. is still not like a, a bad place. Yeah. Um, but so the, think, the headline doesn't always say the whole story. Yeah, I was going right? to say. I think you know we what we see from this is is it the fourth highest? Sure, it is. But we have the highest immigration numbers right now. So certainly there's going to be higher numbers going back home if they're not staying here. Yes. And right. we see unemployment rates inching up, but it's like, what kind of work are we missing? Right. Right. We need, we need more skilled labor come to Canada yeah. or, or if it's that skilled management, whatever the case may be. Right. Yeah. 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 So, so there you go. That's your, um, that's your like macro that's look the at economic lesson for the day, I guess. Right. So. Uh, thank you again for joining us and uh, thank you for all to all of our subscribers and all of you that have subscribed. We appreciate that. And as, as, as we said at the start, uh, if you haven't, please take a minute and like and subscribe. It just helps us with getting the word out, but also make sure that you don't miss anything. We're putting out at least three episodes every week. So you want to make sure you catch everything that we're talking about. And uh, if somebody disagrees or they think I'm missing something, please, add, I want to learn more. Yeah. Add, Put it in the comments if you have a link uh, to whatever source that it might be for information that I can read. Put it in there. I really appreciate it. Just in case you know there's an yeah. aspect we're missing sure. or not looking at it, you know, on a you know, I want a holistic view yep. of like what's yep. happening. So yeah, for sure. I encourage so, you to do that. Yeah. Well thank awesome. you for that. And uh, all right, we'll see you next time. See you next time. See ya.